All right, so we're on to part four now. What I plan to do in this video is show you an example using some simulation software of endpoint URL, but I decided to do the network security stuff first, then move on to the example, right? So we'll look at the example in the next video, in the video after this one actually. So this is part four. So in this one, I'm gonna tackle the network security stuff. Okay, so with classic OPC, the security is well basically this right questionable almost no security in it um, as I told you in the previous video in order for in order for OPC client to connect a server it's just browse and connect so there's no username and password there's no encryption there's no nothing now that was okay because for classic OPC it usually running on the same Windows PC and the plant network there was an air gap you know no physical uh, connection between the plant network and the IT network and so on and only certain people could actually get in front of the PC that was running this stuff so it was secure in that way but with OPC UA the OPC client OPC UA clients and servers are going to be all over the network the IT network the plant network all that sort of stuff so you need some security so what does that security look like so let's look at that now so OPC UA client connecting to an OPC UA server, as I said before, we're looking at TCP IP, either TCP binary or HTTP and so on. And we have to consider four things, right? Four things when looking at security with the OPC UA client to server connection. Okay, the first one is called user authentication. You, you know really really big phrase for something that means username and password you know you use it every day username and password and log on to your laptop your desktop your phone or whatever user authentication so essentially what the US UA server will have within it is the ability for you to configure users in it with uh, and every user will have a username and password so that when the client is connecting you have to put that username and password in the client and then say connect, right? You as the designer, engineer, technician, you have to do that. Okay, then there's user authorization, which is just your security level. Okay, um, example, you have a laptop from work, but IT department doesn't allow you to install any software on it. You know, what's the point? So that's your, your user authorization level is not high enough to install software. So if you have to install software, IT has to give you an admin level, that sort of thing, right? So OPC UA client to server, how does that look? Well, uh, how it might look is in terms of the OPC UA server, you connect with a particular username and password. The client might not be able to write to the server, might be able to read stuff but not write it. Or another level of authorization might be the client is only able to read a certain portion of the data of the memory of the information model within the OPC UA server so you can set those sort of rules and security levels in there then there's certificates all right this is the fun fun part what are certificates well you kind of use them every day or interact with them every day if you didn't notice as yet right so let me just bring up um, this here okay I'm on Amazon right here and if I click in this corner this little lock here it says certificate valid right so this is the certificate a certificate is just a file and it's either given by a third-party certificate provider or what you call self-signed and what it it says is that this thing that you're connected to is the thing that you think you're connected to so Amazon has a certificate so when your web browser goes to Amazon it says hey give me your certificate and then it gets your certificate and it decides whether to trust it or not and of course it trusts it here right so web technologies have been using certificates for a long time uh, this is a, a key example of it uh, let me just go back here right so certificates are now implemented in clients and servers so a client will have a certificate a server will have a certificate so when a client attempts to connect to the server it'll send over its certificate and the certificate the user actually has to go and trust it and then it'll send back its certificate and then you'll have to trust on this side again right you actually have to click something to say trust for the communication to take place so that's another level of security right there so every vendor that's manufacturing a OPC UA server or client they have to go to a third party 
um, you know, service or do what you call self-signing, they must have a certificate in there, certificate in there, which is, is basically a file. Okay. And then we have encryption. Along with certificates, the certificates will have what we call keys in them, public keys and private keys for encryption. So that, that's another option there. For client server connection, you want encryption. And that's a really good thing. Thank heavens for that. Now, here's the, the trick with this, right? Let me just move me across here. The trick with this is that even though all these things are there, you have the option of which one to connect with. So for instance, I could have an OPC server that gives the client options to connect like this. So my OPC UA client, I get the endpoint URL of the server, plug it in there, and it sends a, it connects to the server and the server sends back a message saying, hey, look, I have these uh, particular options if you wanna connect. And the options for connection usually look like this. It might be one of these, it might be many of these. So different OPC UA servers have different options for connection. So it'll actually have a no security connection, just like with classic OPC. And it'll also have, let's say, user authentication authorization, but no encryption. In other words, there'll be a username and password and some authorization, but no encryption. So your data flying across the network is kind of at risk there. Then there's user authentication with encryption, and then you can choose 120K, 256K. Now, these are just some examples of options I'm giving you. Some UA servers might have less, some might have more. Now, you don't have to understand all of this stuff in terms of what's going on under the hood. You just have to know about it and know when to use it. So that I would use no security if I'm just messing around with a client on a server on a single machine doing some testing. So I don't want the headache of username and password. But when I'm going in, into production, you bet your bottom dollar that I will go with user authentication authorization with encryption. Now, um, the encryption here, of course, will add some overhead and so on onto the, um, onto the communication, but it's better than having your stuff um, hacked, right? So when the client is connecting the server, the server will, will say, look, I have these options for connection. And then you as the engineer or designer, have to, you have to go in there, choose an option based on what you're doing at the time, and then do your connection, right? And that connection might be entering that connection there might be entering username and password and authorization level and all this sort of thing. So you have to do some setup on the UA server side and some setup on the client side before you could connect. So connecting client server um, with the endpoint URL and the various options for security, that gets a little trickier, a little more involved than just with, you know, classic OPC. All right, so that's network security. So in the next video, part five, um, um, I will actually use um, something called UA Expert and uh, process UA Server and do actual connections see you, so you can see what it looks like, endpoint URL and the network security stuff. Okay, that's it for now.